Welcome, welcome to episode 44 of our board game podcast, A Master's Degree and Rolling Terribly. I'm your host, Eddie, and joining me as my co-host, a man whose giant banner almost took home the MVP trophy from the most recent scenario we did, Gaz. Say hi, Gaz. Hi, Gaz. Yep, it was good fun so far. Banner Spear. Banner <laughs> I say the name. I'm, I'm, I'm a spare, yeah, like uh, like Square, because we use squares in the game. Yeah. Uh, is uh, great so far. 100% of the scenarios I've played with the Banner Spear have been fun. Mm, mm. And so therefore, that's going to be it. Yeah. Have you named it? Is it like Spanner Pair or something? If I know anything about no, I haven't yet. I'm still thinking a name. So okay. a Spanner Pair sounds right. Yeah. Spanner Pair sounds pretty cool. Yeah, cool. <laughs> there you go. Uh, so yeah, though, if I know anything about data, um, then one. Sample is enough to form a conclusion on. Yeah, no, true. Um, yeah. Your, your Bannersphere video and, and, and episode actually did really well. Uh, a lot of people are tuning in to listen to that, which is such a weird concept because it's a starter, right? And yeah, there's nothing spoilery. Like, well, what's this one? <laughs> there's nothing spoilery about it. But feedback nah, for it has been really fun and really good. I, I still feel like maybe 80% of people are watching it to see me fuck something up, um, which I <laughs> which don't you think you have to wait long. I think <laughs> it's like a minute in. I'm like, hey, what's this symbol mean? I must be in this ridiculous thing, like, right? This and, pet uh, can heal. Yeah, and you even had yeah. me for a second there because I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. Are you yeah. sure? I was so wrong that it made you who knew what the right answer was be wrong as well. Um, it's like just bringing everyone down to my level. So, yeah, if you haven't seen it, go check it out. And then you can leave angry comments on YouTube as well and tell me how wrong I am. So Perfect. Uh, yeah. 100%. So uh, I want to have a little chat with you just quickly before we jump into the episode about feedback. You and I have been asking a little bit um, for feedback just in general of how our podcast is seen, how it's going, what works, what doesn't. Um, what do you would hear more of, et cetera. And there actually hasn't been a great deal amount of feedback that's been coming through, which means everything's perfect, right? Yeah, I think the the biggest piece of feedback that we have to probably take on board um, was that uh, someone said they like almost 50% of the posts on the podcast. Oh, okay. Almost. almost they, didn't, they didn't go into detail, they just left that? Yeah, just almost 50% of the podcast hosts um, are good quality, okay. so... So right. it might be less than 50%. Oh, I mean, I agree. So. Yeah. Okay, we'll just leave it there. <laughs> but what I mean is um, we are open to feedback. Now, if there isn't any to really come, that's fantastic. We've heard all, we've had a lot of really nice messages and, and emails and all that kind of stuff over the, I was about to say years. It feels like that, but it's <laughs> that not was, there yet. It feels like years, yeah. <laughs> but well, it's almost the next year, right? And then is. we can say last year. That's true. Uh, but... I've mentioned a couple of times the most recent episodes we have, I have, we have set up an M dirt discord. Um, it's incredibly casual and you know, you should feel free to jump in. Uh, if you just wanted to see kind of the stuff we get up to and have a chat with us. And it's really good because you get a good platform for rules questions that dwarf has to answer because he's yeah. there. He's <laughs> so, there, right? Like he's super easy to ping cause he's only like one or 10 people. So. That's right. And, and then like, if he doesn't answer it, everyone dog piles on him to like tell him that he needs to answer it. That's right. And it's, it's great. So yeah, no, if you, I'll leave a link at the end of every, in the show notes. Um, and if it's something you wanted to do, join it. It's a seven day link. So I'll have to keep doing it every episode. I'm not leaving a permanent one up because I'm afraid of bots. Light the ring. Pardon? Like the ring. Yeah. Yeah. yeah seven okay. days. Seven days. Gotcha. Right, gotcha. Yeah. Just have to think about that. Does that mean Dwarf is kind of like our Instagram influencer where he's just like, we're, we're, we're put him in the channel as like a, Hey, you should join our channel and come and chat with us. Also, we've got this celebrity dwarf. Yeah, he's there. an ambassador. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. yeah I, think uh, he'll, he'll, I think he's also heard that he is working on the FAQ rules for 12-player Frosthaven. Mm. Um, but he needs more people to contact him to ask him about how that's going, whether it's coming along quickly, uh, and give him some ideas because I think he's stuck. So, please. Yeah. <laughs> Love that. And uh, yeah. it will happen with that PDF. Um, the other thing is Weedy, who we had a chat with recently, uh, feels a while back actually, Weedy and uh, another user, uh, Katrina, aka Lunacy, they are running uh, clock tower sessions actually, and they're starting to introduce us to some online clock tower sessions, which has actually been really fun. If Blood on the Clock Tower is something we've spoken about it quite a long time ago at Game Mania, if it's something you're interested in actually trying, we're all actually quite noob at it. 
So if you join our Discord, we can actually set up some games that way. And it's actually a real casual, like, laugh. I usually mm. get booked really early and um, everyone seems to enjoy that. So I think it'll be a great opportunity to jump in if you've always wanted to play, but maybe you're a little bit shy, don't know anyone that wants to play. Hey, come play with us. Like, we'll welcome you in. It'll be great. Yeah, 100%. I think it is. It's a good social deduction game. It's well-made and uh, friendly people. So, you know, even if you're not, it's not usually your jam, but you just want to get involved and play some anonymous online social deduction games, right? Like, give it a crack because you don't have cameras on. You can just talk. You don't have to talk that much because the game kind of flows pretty well. Mm. Like, it doesn't. it's not one of those ones that relies on pe uh, everybody participating heaps. You can be reasonably passive in that game, again, depending on your role and how it works out. But, like, so you don't have to be the star every time. No. Uh, so it does allow allow that. And just kind of, uh, you know, um, find your fate. Yes. But anyway, moving on. Today's Cross episode. Seven. Yeah, yeah, to, to what we've been building uh, this whole year up to. Is this just yep. one episode, this one right now? That's it. Some of the feedback's <laughs> going to be like, uh, what happened to Frost Haven? <laughs> yeah. Uh, on today's episode, we are covering... Well, we're actually going to cover our outpost phase uh, first because we didn't do that last week. Uh, we ended last week quite late and we didn't end up doing an outpost phase. We've decided to start with that. Uh, and we're also going to have a little chat about buildings because oh. some exciting stuff happened in building land. And uh, I want to have a chat with you about that first because it kind of impacts a little bit about the scenario we did, which yes. was scenario 67, core attunement, aka that is third <laughs> scenario in his pq never ending story part three as i've been calling it yep that's right it's so much fun so the outpost phase from last week what a start for, for starters we didn't get a section all right we didn't get a section event we go straight into uh the daily operations which was the standard kind of spend mark's money to get all our resources that we need and then we went straight into a crab selling and crab retirement because we hadn't actually done that yet. No, no, we had a we had an event. Oh, yeah, we had an Remember event. A, a boat. A ghost ship. Remember? Oh, the... Yeah, okay. okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I'm real keen to know what happens next. Like, we are either, like, going to have something awesome or we're going to oh, get yeah. mega booked. Yeah, okay. Well, I've got yep. those right here. So we'll, we'll do raw straight after this and we'll cover yeah, yeah. some of those. Um, but yes, then we say goodbye to the crab, which also led to another event that, but a different one. So when the crab retired, the numbers, or it wasn't a number on the back. It was something about, uh, we had a section event that didn't lead to a such and such weeks from now, you know, put these numbers in. We got a boat event car. Yeah, so we may never see the crab again. We may never see the crab again. Or it makes, he may it come makes back. Me think, yeah, it makes me think that there must be, uh, uh, like fair few more boat scenarios, right? Yeah, like, they'd have to be. I mean, I suppose we're not that far into the lurker chain, no. so there's got to be maybe at least half a dozen more of those. Yeah. Uh, but that still doesn't seem a lot to get through what is still a pretty sizable, like, event deck for the boat travel, It's, it's so. really hard to say. Because um, Algox was actually quite long, there could be a lot more involved than we think. Yeah, true. So, yeah, it's it's going to be really, really difficult to say. But, I mean, Crab might come back and actually lead a lurker assault on us or something like that. I can only hope. Why? Because then, well, he's rallied the troops and come back to take back his rightful kingdom of Frosthaven. Oh, is that, was that your PQ, was it? It's, yeah, it's still it going. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, be a double agent and learn <laughs> enough about Frosthaven so you can go back and uh, and report. So, yeah, good luck. So you did retire, and the most exciting – we, we knew we were going to make a banner spear. We did the un uh, unboxing for the banner spear. What we didn't get to do until now was open up your envelope, which was envelope 90, mm. which – do you want to talk about your brand-new building that you had, I guess, laid the plans down for us in our Frosthaven town? Yeah, so I will just caveat this quickly because I had a discussion uh, in the Discord about this that – uh, about exciting buildings and how mo mostly the buildings are not exciting. Yeah. This is probably one of the few caveats to that. So it's just very interesting that I just decided to have that conversation directly after opening <laughs> one of the more interesting buildings. Yeah. But uh, anyway, that's a different conversation. It was the town hall, I mm. believe. Yeah. 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 Town hall. So how much spoilers are we going into? Are we. For buildings? Oh, I don't think yeah. it matters. 
like like we're going into the building 90 if you don't want to hear about building 90 press forward fast forward 30 seconds and keep doing that a little bit i'm not putting time stamps yeah. in here just keep okay, going cool. just keep going building 90 gives you challenges which basically turn it into like a roguelike every time you it's, know it's that it's like of, a group battle goal yeah it's really cool so uh, ours was uh, for this one as the example, because we only have only seen one of them. Mm. So you draw it on the way to your scenario when you start it, and uh, then it's got an optional rule for you that you can you can choose to accept or not, right? Yes. Ours was that everything that was undamaged had retaliate too. Mm. Uh, so really uh, bad it was like, oh, I don't, oh, really, really he <laughs> hates retaliate. He's so bad at retaliate. It's like, wow, now I have to one-shot everything. Uh, so, but um, I'm, I'm so excited to see what other things come yeah, up. Same. and. I feel like it's so hard to gauge from one event or one of these to yeah. know what the kind of, like, is that at the upper tier of the difficulty yeah. or is the next one going to be like, you can only, everything is minus one move, right? Oh, like that's. That would hundred percent be one of them, surely. The deck is quite a, large, right? The deck is quite large. And and the premise of the town hall is once you finish the deck, you get to read a section event, right? We have to finish this thing. Yeah. And there's 45 cards in it. That's right. right? That's right. So. It is, it, it, it's part of the rules is that you draw an amount of cards equal to the level of your, uh, your town hall, right? So, and th so this isn't extra spoilers. This is just part of what you do when you unlock it. So it does mean we'll be able to speed that up. So it's not going to take us 45 scenarios to do that, but, but those it affixes, make it harder. those affixes, well, it, when they yeah, they're going to add up, right? Like even doing two, if one was minus one move and which we've just made up. So if it's not a thing. A caveat on that, but the, with the retaliate, I mean, suddenly now it's a lot of, ate a lot of things to remember, yeah. but B, it does, it does hurt you. And mm. it did hurt us. Like there was times where, I mean, when I say we, I mean, Phil, it really did book <laughs> Phil. Like he, he would be like, cause he kept doing this thing. He's got this new card that lets him do heaps of cool shit, but it hurts him. So it he does. kept being like, oh, I hit it and I take two and then I deal two to myself and then I, I hit this other one and I deal two and I deal two myself and his life was dropping so hard and he barely ever got attacked. Mm. But yeah. yeah, but anyway, really excited about this town hall thing. I think it's uh, a really cool addition and it's optional. That's the cool thing. Yeah. Except it's not optional because we have to do it. Oh, we have to do it. Like, like it's like, what I love mm. the most about this is you can't really fail at midway like a battle goal, right? It's just something that's applied. So it's applied to the actual scenario. So you can't just, you know, you can forget it, obviously, as, as a mistake, but it's not like you can, uh, from what I can see anyway, it's not like every single mm -hmm. round this has to happen, otherwise you fail the scenario. I mean, that would be yep. fucked if that was a, um, yeah. one of these challenges, right? But what yep. I'm loving yep. is it's now given me that satisfaction of it's tweaking the difficulty without us having to raise it. So mm. I think that's what I found I'm taking the most away from this is that it's given me that little hit of, I just want this to be a tiny bit harder without necessarily increasing the difficulty and taking that gamble on a scenario that may eventually, you know, may book us. Yeah, it's a really good point because we have discussed it a couple of times and I think even recently is to, we wanted to bump the difficulty up because we were finding in, and again, it's not like a, you know, a big head ego thing of saying they were becoming a bit easy, but we were finding just the way the scenarios were, were going, we were finishing with a lot of resources, maybe because we were just getting really good at our particular classes. Like we're in a good sweet spot. I think one of the times we had like the level eight or nine bone shaper. So like driving a tank around, just whacking everything was easy. So we actually considered bumping up the difficulty. And I think, was that just before we got booked by the heist thing like yes. three times? Yep. Yeah. So yeah, you're, I didn't even think of that. It, it is a way that we are able to now choose to make it a little bit harder um, get a reward for it as well. So it's not like we're just doing it just because, because you do get two XP for That's every, true. uh, or one of these things that we unlock, uh, which if you listen to the podcast last week, two XP at the end of the Is part of item one would have leveled up three people. So, uh, that's nothing to sneeze at. No. Uh, but yeah, I think it's, it's a really, really cool addition. It's a really cool addition. So now the other thing we did was we, Spend 15 of our inspiration finally to yep. blow up one of the other PQs that we hadn't done yet. And we did, according to Dwarf's, you need to do these four list. That we oh, is did. this one of the four? Yeah. We got rid of uh, one of the fours okay. that we needed to get rid of. Uh, because Weedy was like, this is what, I don't know if it's this building, but 
one of them that we may already have or now do have has progress locked yep, yep. him. Uh, we got building 74, which is the tavern. So this is PQ3. Mm. And this was the one, actually, that I was looking at the PQ. It was the one where you have to get like three helm uh, items, three like head items, three uh, wrist uh, hand items, three bag items, like three of everything almost um, at, at, to retire. And I was like, why did no one pick that? I feel like that's a really good one to come up because you can control it. It's just weird yeah. that it didn't come up. Um, but no, this unlocked the tavern and mm -hmm. we got a little thing. I wasn't really paying attention because I was too busy trying to mess up stuff in the X Haven. Can you explain to me what actually happened? Yeah. So we went into the tavern and basically Zane and I think um, maybe not the barmaid, but some other character was there and they were basically talking about, uh, we have to go treasure hunting mm. essentially. So they're like, go treasure hunting. Uh, so now in every single scenario, there's an extra loot card added, which is this special treasure item. And it you tick them off on that list that we've got. So we've got this little list that's got, what, maybe 10 or so on there? Something like that. And each of the section events. So uh, basically, they were just babbling on about treasure. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, that's, again, added another little cool thing to do in the scenario. And it's kind of... Not that having zero resources to build anything wasn't a good enough incentive to loot stuff. Now we have an even bigger personal one of like, oh, you could pull the special treasure. That's true. I like the fact that it's yeah, it's it's in every single scenario and the person who loots it basically picks one of those sections and we mark it off and we read it. And we have no idea what any of them are going to be about. Um, hopefully there's some juicy negatives in there as well. I think that'll be fun to spice things up a little bit. But ultimately, yeah, it's just another thing that we have to do. But my concern is lately we haven't really been looting anything. Oh, especially now that the vacuum cleaner is retired. I mean, crap. Yeah. So, like, like spoilers for this one, I think we looted, like, two things maybe and there were just bodies everywhere, but we just didn't have time because yeah. it was messed up. Um, the other thing I was going to go through, so right now we've got buildings, we've got the three... And I'm just going to jump into a chat about the buildings because we've had the build oh, the majority of buildings like your your craftsman and your trading posts and you know your enchanter and all that kind of stuff. Very run of the mill buildings. It wasn't until now that I suddenly for the first time got excited about what buildings can do uh, yeah. because none of the previous ones have overly excited me. I need a caveat here in that in our group when we get a building, I don't look at the cards for the building. I see how much it costs to make it, and then once Gaz calculates you know once our treasury goes through and says yes we can afford to build this we then build it i pass it to him and he tells us what the card does i don't actually look at what the level two does and the whole time we've been doing this um it's been interesting because we're choosing to upgrade a, uh, one of the buildings but we're not sure what it's going to do and sometimes we're guessing that and look i'm sure this is you know there's this is probably not the way to technically play it because there's no rules against this this is just continuation of our um you know, want to be surprised by absolutely everything, no matter how bad yeah. it's going to mess us up. And it's really interesting when we're guessing it, because like the carpenter, for example, that I think the drifter unlocked was the one that when you do build something, which was, you know, something I wouldn't have minded having early, you reduce the whole build by one resource. And it's like, well, obviously they're going to do two resources when we level that up to level two. And it was like, no, no, no. Now, whenever you build a second thing, instead of losing two morale, you lose one as well as the one resource. I'm like, oh, interesting. So it's really cool to see how these buildings evolve, um, provided we have the materials to upgrade them and evolve them. We don't. No, no, <laughs> we really don't. I think this yeah. is the poorest we've ever been. Yep. Yep, it is. I think we're okay-ish now. Uh, we've stabilized. I feel if we get attacked and lose heaps through that, it'll be bad. But yeah, we definitely have to start looting more, which I should be able to do. I think I've got, uh, I think I've got like a move loot card. So yeah, okay. Start doing um, but other than, yeah, I was just gonna, maybe it's because we've had these buildings for a long time, but since building 90 and, and 74 has come into the picture, it has kind of breathed a bit of life. I don't want to say into the outpost phase because the outpost phase was how we got them, I guess. They're going to be for the main game because they're both yeah. based around the scenario, I guess. And both of them have nothing to do with the outpost. Mm. So the outpost uh, phase is still going to be as vanilla <laughs> uh, as it uh, is normally, but these two are going to add a fair, uh, they're just going to add little tweaks and bits and pieces to our scenario. So yeah, I agree. Well, I agree. They're definitely things uh, that to spice it up a bit. Well, to add further spice, um, once we do next week, 
we'll have a th- another retirement and we're going to get another one. Oh, um, nice. And that's where it gets exciting again because we're yeah. going to get another envelope and, you know, three buildings. We, we need a loot, man. We need a loot so we can build that too. So I, I guess I guess one of the things that I wanted to point out because, uh, I, I, again, I got into this discussion was the buildings, right, mm. and how you get them after the retirements. And I think that it's it's potentially one of – and, I mean, we've heard of people getting uh, locked or kind of – not locked, but, you know, the fact that Dwarf has to – has put together a, hey, these are four building that you really should prioritize. It, it's almost a little bit of a oversight in that you can just RNG your way to not get to play with cool stuff early. Right. So it, it's kind of a bit, cause you're right. We're almost what, two years in or we're at least a year and a half in. Mm. Imagine if we gotten, I mean, I don't know if you can get the town hall early. Is that one of the base ones? I don't have the PQ on me. Yeah. I'm not like, so sure. oh no, it wouldn't be cause the, oh, maybe it is. I'm just thinking about what the, um, the requirements were, but yeah, like definitely a couple of these ones would have been really good to have early. Um, not just purely so that you can get them done, but because they do add a bit of flavor and spice to everything. Like, you know, the loot one kind of would have prioritized looting a bit more. You know, the challenge one would have added, I think when we drew it and we we're talking about it, I said, Ormi made our scenario that we had with him with the Beyblades and the thing like way more interesting than it was probably going to be if we didn't have him. Mm. Right. One of the uh, more plain scenarios with a bit of a twist at the end, but Ormi made it really interesting because we were like, oh, I've got to protect this dude. Like we want to make sure he survives. And it's really, and I feel like these uh, challenges are going to do that because we're going to have a slightly different experience to people, but I'm sure there's going to be situations where we're going to get blocked from doing things because of this challenge that we've agreed to. So it's kind of a shame that they're not in earlier by like in some kind of time, like, uh, like seated, I don't know what the right word for it is, but seated to be there early. Mm. Um, like I almost wonder if that should be the case where there is, you know, here are the first four uh, uh, um, PQs. You deal them out to people in a random order and everybody gets one of them. Yeah, okay. Right? And then you're guaranteed to open those those four buildings because these are really not just important to the game, but they're cool buildings that make the game better. Mm. Right? Cause that's, that's it. I mean, imagine if I'd been like, nah, I love playing the crab. I'm just going to sit here for another five scenarios and not retire. Right. It's a group. Like, problem. well, a hundred percent, right. <laughs> that is a group problem. But the point is that that's the, what our sixth character to retire. Um, everyone's, retired reti- everyone, everyone's, everyone's retired. So it's more than that. Yeah. So, I mean, six or seven, almost eight, we would have been done with the, Snowflake, if we hadn't been on the, um, had to go to Mordor and back. Uh, yeah, so, uh, but yeah, it's, it's just an interesting thought about some of these really cool buildings that uh, make the game more fun, mm. right? It would be cool to have them earlier. It's true. But just that, that just as a, just as an idea. Uh, and so I don't have anything necessarily against the PQ system or the building system or the randomness. I just, I want to have cooler stuff in my game more often. Does that, I mean, the, I guess I don't want to say it's like, it's not going to be a generalization of those are cool and other people don't think, Hey, you know, the garden's cool or whatever else, you know, that we, we may have gotten. Um, but it, does that make things too linear? Does that make too thing uh, too much? Like, yeah, everyone's going from A to B to C to D and that, that whole campaign differences. It's very fascinating to hear how different our campaign is to people like Weedy and, and Iron and Wine and all that kind of stuff. Um, Yeah. I guess it's interesting because some things are scripted in there. Like, you know, you've got the shop dude that rocks up every 10 weeks or whatever it is to be like, Hey, by the way, I'm back. But then you can get to a point where you unlock the shop where that event becomes that uh, section event becomes useless. Mm. Uh, So they've kind of gone, nah, if we don't put him in, then, you know, that whole buying items component of the game is just not going to be there. So there's, there's a cut, like that's one of the examples. I'm sure there's others where they've kind of gone, ah, we'll see this in a little bit for you. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I don't think it's bad. I don't think it's wrong and it's not broken. So yeah. it's, it's really just a give, I wonder how much other cool shit is out there that we're not going to get into later in the game <laughs> and I want it. Right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, but again, maybe, maybe I need to be drip fed. Like again, maybe this is on purpose because if you add too much early too early, then it gets vanilla. Right. And you get playing cause you end up going, well, now we have to do three years and we don't see any new cool shit. Yeah. So 
I, I, I don't know. I, no, and that's why probably, it's, a, it's a good discussion, right? Because there's kind yeah. of no right or wrong here. It's just more, we just like to have a whinge about things, but then don't want things to change too much because we don't really know what, what's going to happen as a result of that said whinge. Yeah, that's it. Because, I mean, most of the things we've complained aren't how they are. Like, oh, we want this or we don't want that tends to happen in two weeks anyway. Yes, like, you know, oh, give does. me a choose your own adventure event book for my um, for my road events and outpost events because this is dumb. Oh, wait, that's exactly what we just got. Okay, I better just shut up The now. game so, has constantly said, hold my beer, shut the hell up. <laughs> pretty much, pretty much. And look, I, again, it just speaks to how cool and well designed it is. Uh, yeah. and, and I have to... I have to say, because it can come across negative, these are just really little nitpicking things. Mm. Um, and they're not bad, broken, or anything like that. It's just like, a, I want to have more fun uh, and give me more cool shit to play with. That's true. No, well said, well said. So, yeah, let's wrap up the buildings move there, move on from there. Uh, scenario 67. So this is um, Return of the King, Extended Edition. Core... <laughs> Attunement. So a long time ago, Daddy got a PQ, and I'm not going through my long story that I did last time, but I got a PQ, and I said to myself, ah, we unlock Scenario 65, guys. Um, but that's okay. I'm not in a rush to retire this yet. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they were my words. We will yeah. do this when I want to start working on it. Uh, yeah. Not in a rush. Maybe I want to get this to nine. Let's just see what happens, because we've never seen a PQ like this do what this PQ did, right? And then fast forward to, you know, Weedy was telling me, he was just like, mate, the amount of times I really wanted to just shake you and just say, dude, dude. And I just held it together because I know what you guys are like and that you wouldn't want that. But it was like, it was really hard <laughs> to just sit here and just watch you just twiddle your way through the to the game, not having a clue how much this was going to ruin you guys. Uh, didn't the Dwarf message you and be like, hey, no spoilers, um, but if you were considering starting your PQ <laughs> sometime soon, that would probably be a really good idea. That would be great. Yeah, like if, Everyone if you was hinting had to, to start me. a PQ now and you weren't sure which one to start and you chose your one, you would choose be choosing correctly. Yeah, and I think in our group yeah. chat, I was like, I'm getting a lot of hints at the moment that maybe we should start this. So I'm I'm just going to start this and we're just going to yeah. do this and just see what happens. And it was at the end of that, it was like, well, you must wait six weeks before the next bit. And I'm like, mm. oh, we fucked up. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> so bad. Although at that point, I didn't think things were too bad because I was like, oh, okay, six week wait. Wow, that's a long wait. But you know what? That's fine. Six weeks, we'll wait six weeks. And then we've got, what, two or three more to go. So that's like another three, three weeks of playing of scenarios. <laughs> You'll be done in 10. Done in 12, maybe, right? Uh, and then, like, we got these elemental core things and the dude was like, oh, good job. Uh, just wait a month and a half. Yeah, pretty much. And, you're like, like, and I remember when you said that and you're like, in six weeks, put down this section event. And I was like, nah, no, seriously, like, yeah, how long? You you're like, in six weeks. I'm like, yeah, no, no, but but actually, when I'm, I'm going to write that in and then we're going to have to rub it out. So it'll tell me where I should be putting it. Like, no, no, it says six weeks. I'm like... Are you serious? <laughs> and you're like, yeah, I think this is why everyone was telling me I should have started this it. This is why everyone, mm. everyone was telling me. So, but yeah. we got there eventually. And here we are. Scenario 68, uh, 7. Yeah. 68 next week. Uh, 67, the elemental core attunement. Sorry, core attunement. Uh, we had a road event. Do you remember the road event? Yes. Mm. Cool. I do, actually. Yeah, okay. Cold. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. that raw for that. We will do that this time. I keep saying that every yeah. week, but we will do that. Have we got like 12 to do because we keep saying it? No, we've got about six, I think, because one of them we covered yeah. a while back. It was six that I could find because some of them will always say also like put it at the end of the event deck. And because lately a lot of our buildings and all that have put new events in, I've been shuffling those event decks. So they lost forever until we see them again. So okay. there's a chance that, yeah, we won't remember yeah. them and they're gone back into the deck somewhere. There's going to be a listener out there that in about 10, 20 weeks, we're going to go, oh, we got this road event and we did it and it was new. It was really cool. And they're like, this is the one I've been waiting for. You said 20 weeks ago you would talk about it in Raw. Like, and just get real angry. And yeah. that's probably going to be Gunslinger. Yeah, <laughs> probably. Um, so our scenario goal, this scenario is complete at the end of the 12th round. At the end of that round, we read a thing. 
I like it when I when I see that for some reason. It feels like oh, we've only got twelve rounds. Like that it already is, puts a timer on it in a good way. Um, yeah. So yeah. it feels like burn, baby, burn, right? Yeah, hundred percent, right? Just as long as we're alive in twelve turns, we're done. We win. That's right. Uh, the elemental cores. So there are four of them. They're like pillars. I'm going to refer to them as pillars from now on, or pylons ultimately. Um, they're they have sixteen health at our level. Uh, scenario level, they have 16 health. They're allies to us and enemies to the monsters. We like that. Uh, really handy for Banner Spear because they help with formations and they really, really help him with that, which they don't. Um, they have one initiative for focusing rules, which is probably the scary bit because I don't think we see that very often. Nope. Any character can forego a bottom action, so discard the card, to perform at our level a, a heal four. Uh, to target a adjacent core. And if a core is ever destroyed, the scenario is lost. Yeah. Our monster yep. combinations this week are the Chaos Demons. Now, we haven't seen these since scenario ooh, 18, um, I believe. It was a really long time ago. We've only ever seen them once, and they, like... They went oh, really far down our tier list. Right? They, them. Yeah. they were like, why are you even in the game? Go go get a different game. Uninstall. Yeah. You are no good. Yeah, we, we didn't really... We kind of looked at them like, oh, these guys are... They, what, what, C or something? C tier? I can't remember. They're oh, just going to eat them up. I don't up. know. Whatever. We, they, were, they were terrible. And someone in the comments on our tier list back then just said, I'm sorry, you put Chaos Demons there? Yeah, and- I know. And, <laughs> and I knew that was going to come and bite us. Like, I was like, we're going to... We're going to find the scenario or the string of scenarios where these are the main things. And I was just like, maybe they're wrong. Maybe mm. we won't, right? Like, you know, and we were wrong. We apologize. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit wrong. They, you know, at the end of year two, when we do the tier list again, they may move up. Um, they will be at the top, like, what's to number one with a bullet or something is the saying? Like, they are gross. Very gross. Very gross. Can you imagine so if gross. they and so Algox Archers had kids, uh, that'd be messed up. If you just had them and Algox Archers in a scenario, I'm pretty sure the scenario would be impossible. <laughs> it would. Like, even if it said survive three rounds and you win, <laughs> nope. that's it. Not done. We can't be like, turn one. This moves at one and this moves at 10 and you take 12 damage per shot. You're dead. Yeah. Agreed. Okay, cool. Yep. Very agreed. Yep. Uh, we have now we had frost demons, we had flame demons, we had light and earth. These are the four of the elemental cores we brought back when we did scenario 66. So this is where they kind of come into play. And mm-hmm. basically we randomized their spawning locations at the very start. So ultimately what you see, this, this the map, by the way, is very much like the way forward. It's kind of that, that, that big, I'm going to go with, because, you know, my brain and creativity and art. Um, I'm going to go with the, you know, the Power Rangers when they kind of go, it's Morphin time and they put their hands forward. It looks like the map looked like that, right? It kind of looked like that. Yeah. And okay. for those that, that don't get that reference, and I think it was a great reference, um, uh, also just like, I guess, like a, a letter H with a thick bit in the middle. Yeah. What? Oh, like we, a TIE we, fighter, actually. Looks like a TIE fighter. TIE bomber. Ty, uh, yes, Ty Bomber, yeah, 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 yeah. Ty Bomber, or, or Ty Vance, yeah, one yeah, of those two. Yeah, okay. yeah. So, yeah, Power Rangers. Uh, okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, it 100% looked like that. It was very much like that, but except we started in the middle. So, we were surrounding the orb. It might have been the original orb, I don't know. But we were surrounding the orb, and we had the four pillars uh, on the corners of the same tile, and then on the wings of the TIE Fighter, you had all the spawn points, basically. And we had all four of the actual elemental demons in each corner, and then we had two middle ones that was going to spawn nothing but chaos demons. And yep, that was together. ultimately the setup. And what I liked about this, and well, actually, you tell me what your initial thoughts on the setup of scenario uh, 67, 8, uh, yeah. 7. There's one room and we knew exactly where everything was going to be all the time. Uh, so you can start planning and you can, especially considering this was my first scenario as a banner spear, I was like, great, everyone's going to be really close and I don't need to move everywhere anywhere. So, uh, no, I think at the start it looked really cool and uh, it's, it's one of those things that because we knew everything that was going to happen mm. and start making plans and then you get to slowly watch those plans fall apart. Yeah, like in, in, in spectacular fashion. Yeah. I wrote down in my notes, uh, kind of look like scenario 38, kind of, with more corridors covering gaps and we're in the middle pushing back waves, the planning, the coordination, the cards, the new banner spear that appeared out of nowhere. <laughs> so um, you're 100% right. The fact that you can see... 
because the the rules have each round. There's uh, when things are going to spawn, and it's only one thing. So without without the chaos demons, when they spawn, they spawn heaps. But it's only one earth elemental, and it's only one frost elemental on their on their actual cues. We literally had the transparency of this is the way this is going to effectively happen. Stop this, right? Yeah. What I didn't realize until a little bit in is that with the pillars initiative one focus, right, and them always being targeted, it's once a monster got next to it, it was always attacking it. There was no way you were, unless you could push it off and then get in there. So it's like when you're doing a puzzle and a piece gets on the side and you go, well, I can't get it off the side now, right? Like (laughs) if you can only push it, uh, push it, like, you know, and so I didn't realize that till it, it wasn't an issue until later. But once it happened, I was just like, guys, 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 yeah, like, yeah, yeah. this thing's going to keep hitting this thing for like five every turn yeah. uh, if it doesn't crit, right? So we need to do something about this because, I mean, yeah, it was it was tricky to keep it alive. But So uh, at the time, uh, for any reminding, we have our, our group was made up of a trap, a blink blade. We had our snowflake and myself and Gaz on his fresh brand of spear. So we already went into a planning phase. We had what we call like the legs side and then the no legs side because we had earth demons and frost demons spawning on one side, which Mark and I called dibs on because yep. Mark's the trap and I'm the snowflake. We kind of want yeah. them to have legs. And then we had Phil and we had Gaz on the other side where we had flame demons and light demons. And there was kind of like this agreement of splitting up. Mark and I were planning on our side. Mark was going to build, you know, like the old TDs, old tower defense games where you kind of build stuff so that it forces the movement of people with legs to walk a certain Mm. way he was going to do that with the traps and i was going to sort of do the same thing with the hazardous terrain so ultimately at the very start mark set up a couple of traps on his side and then he was going to come over and help the other side because there was one thing we sort of overlooked and that was flame demons flame demons have a lot of shield and Mm. when we went around the room no one had pierce yeah yeah i think i have a little bit of pierce but not enough that i can consistently kill something i would have thought a blink blade would have had pierce what do you mean? They just hit for two damage eight times in a round. Like, yeah, great for Retalio, but like, tell me yeah, about Pierce. Yeah, really good at himself. Yeah. Look, one thing I will say before I forget is that the cool thing at the start of this scenario for me was it felt like I had just rolled a new tune in like an MMO. And my friend who has like <laughs> a really high level, like end game geared out rating tier character was like, Hey, I'll, I'll run you through some dungeons. Cause I'm lining up going like, Ooh, what does this new shiny card do? I wonder how I move and attack and do some damage. And you're like, uh, okay. So if I put this here and push this guy here and then do that, it's going to, and I was just like, I felt like, well, not that we were being carried, but it definitely did feel like <laughs> there's this really powerful being here. Um, and it's okay. Cause I might not be able to do much, but don't worry, that guy's going to carry the team. Well, uh, so, and I think he did, I think he did a really good job. I, I want to go out and just say, because this scenario I thought was really fun yeah. that, Everyone actually had a role in this, including you, mm. including you. You did a phenomenal job of A, keeping the banners up, right? B, being a damage sponge. There was this really... Keeping the pillar, you mean keeping the pillars up? Yeah, yeah, you kept the pillars up. Yeah. But you yep. were also taking some really fat hits. And none of us really have a lot of shield or block. So technically, we all should be taking the same amount of damage when we get hit. I don't know what was going on with that enemy modifier deck, but we were getting all the red negatives and you were getting all the green pluses and all that you were getting hit we were getting hit for like five i was getting it down to three and you were taking it up to six six or seven and it was just amazing to see the same creatures hitting us on two different sides and they were just wrecking you like yeah, over and over again. i was low level <laughs> i was like level two i wasn't supposed to be there but thematically <laughs> yeah thematically from a, a mmo example that's exactly what it was like they they mm, helped yeah. us get that fantasy right yeah. <laughs> to do that so yeah. Mark, on the other hand, he was the one that actually got to do his thing where he brings down flyers out of the air and right onto a trap. He was phenomenal at working out those flame demons whilst also leaving his uh, our side of the room because the traps alone were enough to stop the creatures from going and hitting that pillar. His pillar that he started, because technically we all kind of had a pillar in a way, his pillar was completely safe apart from yeah. when they started pulling ranged attacks. Um, then then yeah. she got a little bit awkward, which of course they, they started to do. Yeah, like, 
I agree. I love this scenario. I think I had so much fun with it and I could play it again. I think you said this at the end, so I'm probably stealing your words, but I felt the same way. I could play it again with different characters yeah. and it would be fun. Like I almost wish that this wasn't the third last quest in the never ending story chain that we'll never come back to because <laughs> if it was almost like a repeatable one that you randomly generated the monsters and you could go back to collect extra loot it would be great to come back with four different characters four, four different like, characters will play so i, I I've, I've dubbed this uh, a sandbox playground scenario it's the perfect one for that yeah. because every time number one a challenge different challenger a uh, different challenge card um, and then the different makeup of all the different characters and mm. also the makeup of the different demons you would have brought. Like, just change this in so many fun ways. It's just, I use the words infinitely replayable, but I, I don't know about that. <laughs> Infinite's a big number, right? Yes. Uh, it's at least got like at least two or three more sessions into it. That's right. Which, but, which no, is more I agree. Than I, it others. was a lot of fun. And what was cool was that I felt everybody, everybody had some really cool moments. Everyone did some cool shit. And it felt like... It felt hard, and what made yeah. it feel even better that we completed it, no spoilers, uh, is that we had people in our Discord doubting our ability to. So, I mean, just as a quiet uh, side note, uh, that drove us even harder to make sure that we didn't lose. But in saying that, everybody had some really cool moments. And that's what that's what's cool about this game when you can do that, is everybody gets to live in the spotlight for a little bit, Yeah. right? Uh, and that's those moments. I mean, for me, playing games, especially playing games with friends, is I, tr I, I like try to enable that. Like, that's why I kind of, why I like playing support characters and some things. Cause I'm like, if I can enable someone else to do amazing, cool stuff, then it's like, wow, look at that. That was cool. We got both got to share. Yeah. And I think everyone got to kind of do their cool tricks, which was, um, yeah, really pleasure to, to play through. So it's a kind of a beacon in what has been an abysmal, uh, quest chain. <laughs> well, hang on. 65 was in my top 10, okay? It wasn't Wait, in my, in my worst it? 10? I think it might Unreleased? Have been. No spoilers? Uh, yeah, maybe. Unreleased. Uh, stay tuned. That's coming out when this episode comes out. How exciting. <laughs> but mm. the other thing I was going to say was um, no, level 9 Snowflake, obviously not going for XP anymore, not going for um, perks anymore, battle goals or anything like that. I just got to unleash and have a lot of fun. I was very, felt very responsible for my side. I did kind of oversee a little bit of the planning because a lot of my top cards are to place hazardous terrains, which means I'm not actually attacking. So they got to build up and there was a period of time where I had a bunch of stuff around me and my pillar. And I was like, I might need a slight hand just to give me a little bit of relief here. Cause I ended up, once I sat next to that pillar, my bottom action majority of the time was going straight into the pillar as his health was yo-yoing up and down. But I want to do a shout out to one card that I have that I have not been able to use really well all because of a certain media that is no longer with us. The level nine card, uh, I think it's Snowblind. Uh, Snowblind, which is the one that basically does an attack three uh, at targeting two enemies within range five that are adjacent to the same hazardous terrain. And it disarms both. And I, it was so bloody clutch in this particular scenario because disarm obviously on those chaos demons when they were yeah. around the hazardous terrain just meant that we could ignore them. And as we started to wind towards the end, you, you're right, this was hard. It was actually, it was hard and challenging in a fun way. Like you were constantly feeling like you were, you, you had the, I don't know, the army pushing on you and you're, you're getting, you know, pushed back and back and back. You're like, hold, hold, hold. And you're trying to hold. Um, yeah. It was very cool for the, the, those kind of moments. Like you said, everyone got the shine. And that disarm card was uh, was very clutch. And I remember having a moment, I think the first time you used it, I, I was like, was that your level nine card? And yeah. you're like, yeah, yeah. Because in my head, I went through and went, hmm, we played with the snowflake for a really long time. A ranged disabled two <laughs> targets would be really useful. Yeah. Why have I not seen it? And yeah. so I was like, it must be level nine. Because if you've been like, nah, it's level three. I didn't pick it up the first time around. I would have been like, oh, okay. We'll just add that to the muddle everything every time you open a door thing to not support. But yeah, it was uh, it was super clutch. And what I loved with those moments was that, as you said, you kind of got pushed in. You, you did a few rounds of setting up and, you know, they were kind of closing in. But we all adjusted. Like... We, we kind of all did start with a pillar, but I feel like through the whole thing, we all were uh, adapted to it. It was like, okay, cool. Well, I've got to move in there and help, right? Or like, oh, okay, this part, it, was, it felt like a TD. Mm, like yeah. in that we were all playing together going like, shit, shit, that one's leaking, right? Yeah. Um, let's go over there and, and stop that. Um, it's all right because we've got some space over here because we, we booked these two and that's bought us a couple of rounds. 
Uh, you know, and uh, again, hats off to Mark on this trap, like just blowing up those flame demons because that just meant we did not have to worry about them. Yep. It, it was th those kind of moments were really, really cool. So yeah, I, uh, yeah, I, I'd be really keen to know other people's experiences with this because as you said, it was hard. It would play very differently with different classes. And I'd be really interested to know if there are people who have hated this one because of that, that difficulty. Right, like a bad class makeup, and I don't say bad as in like something that doesn't synergize really well to this type of scenario. I could see this one being a slog, right? Like a lot of cheesing, a lot of just getting in the way of monsters and just trying to just just mitigate damage without really doing anything. There, um, whereas there... I felt we got to do a bit of everything. We got to do some killing, we got to do some blocking, some cheesing, some you know damage soaking. We got to do all of it to get across the line. Yeah, I did, I did a little bit of research on this to see and. Because it's an early PQ, some people were getting this with their original starting lineup. Ooh, so that is where, and, and look, a lot of people are complaining about the difficulty of this, is saying it's a bit busted, right? Keeping those things up. The pillars have less health also uh, because of the lower scenario level of people who are doing this earlier in their campaign, which means yep. that sometimes um, Chaos Demons go very early, like one, and then we'll run up and just book the pillar. And if they draw a crit, sometimes it's just GG right then and there. And that's been some of the complaints that I've seen. Now, if we were to paint a picture of Geminate, Drifter, Deathwalker, Bone Shaper, I, that feels hard. I'm not going to lie. That we didn't have, like, being able to t funnel them the way we did was already put a fair bit of pressure on, you know what, everyone just go to the sides near the pillar and just hold as much as you can while these guys are all coming in and beating you pretty hard. Chaos Demons are pretty gross. Um, it, yeah, I can sort of see where the difficulty kind of, uh, stacks up a little bit. Yeah, I agree. That would be, that would be tricky in that group. Uh, I, I can, we didn't have a lot of heals, right? We didn't have a lot of, uh, status effects. There wasn't a lot of like, you know, stop immobilize doing things. Yeah. yeah. Things like that. I think with the, the high level bone shaper with the bone horde, uh, probably takes, um, a, at least a corner. Yeah. Um, although we, we kind of found out it wasn't great at tanking, like it could get burned down pretty that's quickly true. and then that's just GG. So, but yeah, it would definitely be interesting. It would be, and I can see it being tricky, uh, especially if you replace, say even replace a drifter with a blink blade. Now I think the blink blade's really good, but a scenario like this probably isn't where it shines, um, necessarily uh, against certain mobs. So yeah, I can see that being really tricky. Mm. Last, so, thing, yeah, last, thing, last thing I wanted to talk about is just quickly on Chaos Demons. Yes, they go to one. They also go to 99. One of the things we mentioned in a, a scenario a long time ago was that they, one of the first things they did was, I don't know, consume Dark or consume something and Bane's a target. And that was our first instance of Bane. So when they didn't get that off, it was kind of like, oh, these guys aren't too scary, right? Now we're seeing them in their full form when there's multiple of them. They are terrifying. They hit like trucks and... That, that that time, my lowest initiative is an 11 on White Winds, which is the, my, sh my snake. Um, I always combine that to try and get my Snowblind off. And every time I played that, I was like going at 11. They always pulled the one. Yep. So without fail. So it always kind of messed me up. Luckily, that one card I think also was a ranged attack meant they stood where they were because the minute two of them leave that hazardous terrain, all of a sudden I can't do what I was meant to do. So very infuriating. And yeah, a lot of respect for a... A monster type that I didn't respect. D tier, F tier, not even on our tier list, didn't make the cut. Yeah. No, I I got the same thing. I've got a six initiative, which is crazy fast, right? <laughs> and I, they beat me twice. Yeah. I was just like, oh, I really want to go first and do this thing. Oh, I guess you can have a go then. Like <laughs> one, that seems pretty fast. Well, you so. were actually a third fastest because the flame demons went at three. So Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I was like third on a six. You're like, what? <laughs> So yeah, it's uh, it was definitely interesting. No, they they are tough. They are tough, and I definitely hope we don't have oh, to fight them again. Innate muddle. How many times were we muddled when we were doing the oh, attacks? Yeah, like especially muddle. at the start. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, which yeah, because innate muddle, it's like fighting night demons, right? Like you, you you can't crit night demons. So one of the things that makes them more survivable is you're always doing slightly less damage than you want to. Uh, at just gonna say you can't crit them i pulled the double crit <laughs> yeah yeah you did yes yes so. the bless. yep yep you did manage to do it so i shouldn't say can't it's very unlikely that <laughs> very. it very so but yeah the model yeah 100 percent. the model makes a big difference so yeah mm. so yeah we we did get there 
we didn't really loot. It was just survive to 12 rounds. And the, the good thing about the rule set is being, you know, survive to 12 rounds. Once on the very last round that it was happening, I dis- uh, disarmed two of them that were relatively near the pillars and little things like that. And it was like, oh, don't worry about them. Just make sure we're all good. Okay, there's really only one pillar over here. You know, I was work- I was doing a lot of punting. So the minute anything got close to Gaz's pillar, the one in front of Gaz, uh, like Gaz said, it would lock onto the pillar from that moment. You know, you got to punt these things further away so that they don't get locked in like that. And, you know, it was just a bit of adjusting. But other than that, it was very difficult, but I think it was one where we maintained our, I think we had a bit of bad tempo at the start from some, ba- I, I missed twice and we had a bunch of stuff happening, but then we pulled it back and then we got ahead. And I think yep. that that was, um, yeah, it was it was difficult, but we we did it. I, I would say yep. kind of comfortably towards the end. Yeah, the, the other thing as well, I know we keep saying one more thing, but to re- bring right back to what we said at the start, we also had the challenge from the town hall where everything had retaliate to anything. Sorry. Everything that was undamaged had retaliate to. Yes. And I remember there was a moment where Phil was going to go in and hit a night demon. He's like, all right, I'm going to go in there. And you went, and then I went, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? you went the turn before and you did like a two damage attack and missed yeah. or something like that, or one damage attack and we'll go minus one because <laughs> of muddle. And then I'm like, that's okay. I'll run up and I'll hit it. And I was like, oh, look, I found my miss too. <laughs> yes. So when Phil ran up, and punched it. He took two damage. He's still gonna take like, the rat. We tried. Yeah, we, we tried. Did. Like we we both of us tried to do one damage to it. But yeah. So again, that made it slightly more difficult, which is again in another interesting thing that that's gonna kind of throw up. So yeah. yes. Um. So rewards for this scenario was one morale and one prosperity, and we got a force link straight to scenario sixty eight. Uh, yep. Which they is exactly spend twelve weeks waiting, and then they just rip you into the next one without ever getting to go back to frost save. Right so. into it, so you can't have it either way. If you want a break, no, no break for you. Um, now no, this is the part where I say thoughts on scenario, but I, I'm almost certain we've kind of really, really hit that one nice and hard and very passionately. Yep. So yeah, um, the last note I'll have is everyone did a phenomenal job, and it felt like a good victory. Like some don't actually feel good when we win. Uh, this one definitely did. Like mm. some of them kind of feel like, oh yeah, we won, right? Um, but this one was a real kind of go team. It kind of brought us mm-hmm. all together and it was a great, great feeling. Um Yeah, yeah, go for it. If we had longer to play, say we were like some groups do where they get to play for half a day or so, this would have been a great one to play into the next scenario. Like, again, because I think we would have ridden that high and probably got smashed down really hard considering what the next scenario is going to do to us. So that that high would have become a low really quickly. Mm. But it would have been cool to take that momentum in. Yeah. Like, you know, ride that high, jump in there and go, all right, let's go. We've, we've got this and yeah. then see how much that can carry us. But, uh, yeah, it's uh, it'll be interesting jumping in and doing the next one. Instead, it's now we're going to an interstate game and because we've had a week and, <laughs> yeah, right. we're, yeah, morale's reset. Good. Um, our mate Ormi, how does he go in this scenario? Oh, he has a rough time. Like, he, he he's going to pick something to go next to, and then the, sh- uh, the what are they, Chaos Demons are just going to go. Yeah, he gets wrecked. He gets absolutely he gets, wrecked. He because he doesn't, he doesn't stay with us. Nope. Uh, he runs away. You need a, a hold command on him or something like that. Mm. Um, communications while uh, yeah people say brutal a lot of people really dislike it it's appearing on a lot of dislike lists which is why I look forward to kind of our top 10 lists and our worst lists because I know that just people's experiences in scenarios are always going to be different and yeah. I think that's really fascinating because yeah in any other world this would suck <laughs> yeah yeah definitely battle goals um uh, Someone had Ritualists, kill an enemy while three or more elements are strong or waning. That sounds like Mark. He didn't track it, so he's not 100% sure. Yep. Uh, he definitely yep. killed some mobs, but the Chaos Demons have a, a, a card where they create every single element. They did that right at the start. They never did it again. And it was kind of annoying because I could have really used having some of those up. Uh, I think I'm the only one that really cared, but it was just kind of irritating and that would have probably helped Mark a little bit as well. But yeah. Yep. We had accountants have zero cards in your hand each time you rest. I believe that was Phil. And I think Phil got that. Again, Mm -hmm. it's another one where you self-track. I had workhorse gain 13 or more experience before any bonus scenario experience. I did not get that, but I also don't care. And Gaz had his old favorite, the old sneaky, sneaky. What was it? Slowpoke. Slowpoke. Yep. Move no more than two hexes on each turn worth two juicy ticks. And I will say, 
Okay, the other two cards that I had. So I had three cards to choose from, as you do when you're choosing battle goals. One of them was don't end your turn adjacent to another player character. Mm. I think that's it. Right? That's the one. That's how it's worded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, oh, so first time as a banner spear. I'm looking at all these cards. <laughs> Literally, they say stand next to somebody. Like, this is it. So it was kind of like, well, that's impossible. And the other one I got was kill a monster the same turn as you open a door. Oh, there weren't good. any doors. No, no. Okay. <laughs> Slowpoke, I looked at Slowpoke was great for this. It, well, it turned out Slowpoke was really good being the other alternative to those terrible ones yeah. that were impossible. Uh, so, but there were a couple of times I was like, oh, I really need to move three or four. Guess I'm not. Yeah. yeah no, like, you've done that you know, before. But I think, yeah, this one, I don't think I moved more than four squares away from my starting hex. So I reckon I, I moved down a little bit, then I moved up a little bit, and then moved back down. And just, I'm going to stay next to this pillar. I'm just, this is easier. The trap moved the furthest out of all of us. Yeah, it was all over the place. Yeah, <laughs> never seen move so much. Just traps everywhere. Yeah. It was phenomenal. Yeah, uh, yeah. DPS for Scenario 67. We had our top DPS was a Blink Blade. Phil had 70 damage. I had 62 on Snowflake. We had Gaz on 35 on his brand new Banner Spear. Really good. Uh, Mark had 34. So uh, right there as well with damage. Yeah, that's an interesting one because two things from that. Mark was probably doing less damage than he should have because he was using his traps to maze. Yes. In a normal scenario, we want to kill and we don't want to do that. So he builds them up a bit more and does more damage. Uh, so again, really good to get that high considering he pretty much was trying to just use them to redirect where things were. And also Phil on 70 odd. And he was like, I, I know anyway, cause I spoke to him about this. He didn't enjoy the scenario as much, but not due to the scenario, but he just misplayed a few turns and found that he wasn't able to, you know, maximize his damage and have those optimal turns, which always feels bad when you kind of know you stuff something up. You're like, oh, I shouldn't have done it in that order and still managed to pull out 70 yeah, okay. odd damage. I mean, I'm terrified. My tiny violin when this is guy playing right gets now. It right. Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> when, and he actually gets it all right in the right order. Are we just going to be like, um, I mean, you you can probably handle this scenario. We'll go have dinner and we'll come back when you're done. Yeah. Well, like, that, that's apparently how Bling Blades play, apparently. Cool. Look forward to. Uh, damage taken. We had 45 from Gaz. We had 38 from me. We had 23 from Phil and 13 on Mark. Uh, and then finally healing. Uh, 21 on myself. Um, 39 for Gaz. Now, how did you achieve that? The banner of... Hope, I believe it is, which heals uh, uh, allies within range three. At the start of your turn, you get to heal oneself. May. And also... Huh? May. 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 May heal, yeah. <laughs> and uh, also the uh, top of... I don't know the name of the card, but it's basically the one that lets you summon... Weapon summon a dude, or something? Uh, or uh, at all costs, I think it's yeah, called. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And it basically... Uh, it heals three for everybody, all allies. Mm-hmm including pillars yeah. or elemental cores or mm. whatever that you want to call them. Um, and you take one damage uh, for every person that chooses to uh, heal and increase the health. So I think I use that twice. Yeah, it's huge. Uh, and did a lot of healing. So, yeah, it uh, it played out pretty well. I was really impressed with how much variety I got out of that. Like, I didn't feel like the healing was detracting from me doing other things. I was no. able to heal... Uh, I mean, having, again, not moving very far and being able to put a banner down and just basically heal everyone for 10 turns and do one every, oh, is pretty good. Um, but like, yeah, it just, it, it felt really cool. I felt, I felt good. I'm, I think I'm going to enjoy playing this. Yeah. So I'm looking almost, forward to it. Almost like you could have done your mastery on this or something. I 100% could have done my mastery for the same reason a couple other people have mentioned they have when you have a scenario, which is one room and you don't have to move. Yeah. Um, but stupidly, I did not. Oh, uh, Okay. <laughs> well, you don't know you, how much movement you're going to be needing to do, running around, trying to stop leaks and all that kind of stuff, right? Especially with Slowpoke, right? Yeah, I'm going to yeah. do heaps of movement. Yeah, of course. Uh, Phil had 10 healing and Mark had 2. That summarizes our uh, DPS. Um, just nice summary. Your first experience with the Banner Spear, how did you go? Or how did you feel? Yeah, it felt really good. It felt really good. I felt most turns I had options. Uh, I could pick and choose kind of where I went. <laughs> I felt people were pretty open to asking me where they, where I wanted them to be, uh, which is cool because I had, I think both uh, Mark was trying to get near me and near the mobs. Uh, 
Phil was as well, a little bit like, hey, I'm going to hit this thing and then I'm going to move away. Where do you want? So that was kind of cool to have people considering that stuff. And as I learn more about that, I think we'll get a bit more. Uh, again, I was really cool to be able to put out some heels because we don't have a lot of heels in that group, uh, you know, and it also, I know the joke is that you don't heal people, but you've shown as playing that sub, uh, that kind of more aggressive snowflake. So it was good that you were able to continue doing that rather than having to go, oh, shit, everyone's low level. I'm going to heal everybody <laughs> and become a heal bot. Yeah. So, again, that was that was cool. Uh, yeah, like, I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. I think uh, I think I'm going to have fun playing it. I I don't know about the next scenario, but maybe it will be okay because we'll be fighting a giant boss that has a million health. Mm. So people will hopefully just be standing next to it the whole time. Mm. That's but true. Uh, yeah, no. Uh, after one scenario, I'm really enjoying it, and uh, I think it's got a pretty it's got a pretty high ceiling in regards to I think what I can try to make happen with it. Uh, but I do envision, especially the scenarios we've got to move more, I, I can see it getting frustrating. Like yeah, okay. Without a decent move card or if people just go, you know what, I'm having a bit of a prep round. I'm going to stand still. I'm going to have a rest. <laughs> right? No, no, no. But like you get the, if you get out of sync with people and you're like, I'm going in and everyone's just like, no, I'm going to rest. You're like, oh, well, I can't. Yeah, like, I what am I going to do, right? Like you're not going to be there. So, uh, and that's where yeah, I think it, it might be a couple of turns, but yeah. Yeah, okay. I didn't really pay a lot of attention to what was going on. The only things I did see were obviously your heels, the banner heels. Um, I didn't see much of formation, so I, w I wasn't sure whether any of those were working. I had my own puzzle on the other side that I was spending a lot of time focusing on. I did see you get hit every time, though, because I was the one flipping the card um, when it was happening. So, yeah, my experiences of you playing the banner spear right now are you take a lot of damage, um, which is good, but you can because you can get yourself back up again. In fact, I some heals your way as well to help yeah. uh, mitigate that but yeah i, I, I did, you, did you get a lot of formations off I, I got a few yeah yeah i got a few uh i didn't actually play the persistent card that gives me one permanent shield which would have been really helpful considering how how hard i got hit so that's a lesson uh but yeah i i, I got a few yeah yeah okay cool. it was again it was pretty the the thing that i the thing that i've got to work out was that there were turns in which uh if I was to get the formation off, like Mark needed to go before me, right? There was one situation where he's like, okay, well, I'm going to go before you and I'll move into place. Great. But that means the monster's going to hit him. Mm. And he so doesn't like that. We do not want him getting hit because he's got like one life, like maximum one life. Mm. So uh, everything's a crit. And yeah, so that's the part that I've got to work out is that we don't really have another tanky like person in the uh, in the group. Uh, so that's going to be probably a bit of a challenge to work around. Oh, we need to retire, Mark. Oh, and get a big tanky fist. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think that'll yeah, be a so, really cool compliment. Yeah, but uh, yeah, but look, I've got that to look forward to. So uh, it should be should be fun. Yeah. Um, I have one last bit, and then I'm done. Did you have something you wanted to say about this scenario? No, I think we're done with. This oh, scenario. just. Uh, yeah, I had a quick question, uh, mm. because it was something that I was talking to a couple of people about and can you get your thoughts? Cause I think you've got the opposite experience to me. Complexity of classes, mm. right? And I don't want to go too far down this rabbit hole cause it's not the big conversation I want to have, yeah. but you now play two one complexity classes being the drifter and the, uh, snowflake, yeah. right? And this is not a setup to throw heaps of shade at you, by the way. Like, <laughs> That's fine. You don't need is, to. Um, <laughs> I'm feeling it already. It's fine. <laughs> But no, so you played two that are rated on the card one complexity. Right. From the outside, for me, looking at how you play those, both of them, one of those was substantially harder, or harder is the wrong word, but seemed to take more effort and more figuring out on how to pump and be really like high end plays than the other one. Yeah. Right. So it, the question came up and we were talking about the complexities. Did you feel like, again, they were both the same level of complexity when it comes to playing the class? Yeah. Sorry, what was the question? What was the last bit question? I was listening Did to everything feel, except for that. Yeah, except for the question. Yeah, that's right. We, we, we figured that out during the quiz, right? You don't really, you just want to tell the answer, don't, not listen to the question. Uh, so did you find, being that they're both one complexity classes, yes. that they both felt the same level of complexity to play? Not at all. 100% no. The Drifter obviously... The the good example I have is when you and I were comparing Geminate cards versus Drifter cards, and mine was like, hit hard this and do this, 
and yours were like do 500 somersaults through a hoop of fire into a pond of dolphins. Like it was like chalk and cheese. It was insane. That's, I see the complexity of the drifter being one because of how basic and easily understood, uh, understandable the cards read. That's the same as the snowflake. So the snowflake is the same, which is why I believe they rated it a one is because it's very easy to understand. This one is an attack three and it's going to pull, sorry, it's an attack one targeting three people and it's going to pull them so far and it's going to make wind, right? Uh, that's whipping gale. It's like one of the cards and I'm like, oh, it's very easy to understand to make it effective there are other components added to it. So if it was just a regular attack, obviously the, the cards are basic to understand. Heal, snowball is a heal too, giving regenerate. Um, and then the bottom of it is the persistent one that increases, you know, stack damage. The cards are easy to uh, to get. And I think that's where it comes from. Anyone can pick up the snowflake and play it, right? They mm -hmm. can play the cards and go, oh, well, this is going to do this. I'm going to do one damage to all these guys and I'm going to pull them towards me. It's what you do before that. It's the planning involved. When you do things like push and pull, that's like, not as clear cut as damage as just like that sword icon of, oh, you know what this is going to do. It's going to reduce their health by this number potentially. Plus that it's more, oh, you can pull them nice and simply, but you can make this better if you planned it with, with another class, with another ability, with something you prepared earlier. Uh, and also with your location, right? Because you need to be able to make sure that they're moving at least one tile closer per pull. So that's where, yeah, the complexity of the character is really, I think, a much higher. I don't think it's like a five or anything like that, but I do think to play it effectively, um, yeah, you yeah. you need to be familiar with exactly the ordering of how you're going to do it. And yeah, look, okay, at cool. the very start, you know, I, I think this is where it's tricky. They need to have potentially a second, like, complexity rating, where it's more like ease of use versus skill ceiling or something yeah. like that. Because the Snowflake is a classic example of you will understand everything about how this character works or you want to play it well. Um, yeah, well, you can, that's going to take some time and that's going to take some planning and, and careful consideration of, you know, which cards you select, the timing of when you use them, um, you know, working with your elements as well because Drifter didn't have any. All of a sudden you now have two that you need to keep track of um, as well as, you know, persistence and all that kind of stuff. So, Yeah. Yeah, okay, cool. No, that, that makes a lot of sense. And that's what I observed, mm. right? Like, that's the kind of thing that I saw. And I just wanted to, and again, it's not about the complexity system, but it's probably more anybody's out there who, uh, you know, might be considering some of these classes like the Snowflake. I would say don't be put off by a low complexity class. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. You're right, because I don't think that the complexity number is an indication of how good it is. And I think people might associate those things of like, oh, it's a one or a two, so that means it's probably not that hard and it's probably not going to be that good, right? Like, I'll learn it in three levels and then it'll be boring. Uh, so I think that's a, yeah. And, and what you just said is probably what we came to the conclusion on in the discussion is you need a, this is base level and this is potential. Like if you wanna you wanna be maximizing your damage output or whatever you're trying to do, right? Then it might be a three or a four. If you want to just skate by and do some things and play the class, yeah, it's a one. Yeah. So yeah, cool. No, no, and, no that's and, why I wanted to discuss because it's it's interesting because now you're going to a complexity three class. Is the shackles is three? I yeah. I think so. I think I think it's around there. Yeah, and it, like I'm seeing the same things kind of with you playing that as when you started playing like the mid-level snowflake, like the hang on guys, I got to work this out because there's things I want to do and I got to work out how to make them happen. And I'm seeing the same things through that. And I'm wondering if that is the base level for the shackles, like as in that's where you need to start with the shackles because there isn't any just like, I'll just play some cards and things will happen. Right, there are a couple, so you, but yes, you almost need to start at that point, and that's maybe why that complexity is a bit higher. Because now, once you figure that out, well, that'll be your new your new floor, and you'll be like, "Well, that's fine. Yeah, I can I can go." And now, the the next level is to how do I pump out more and more out of my cards. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, it'll, I'm just gonna it'll be interesting over the next few weeks seeing you play the shackles, yes. right? Because it's uh, again, yeah, a, a differently rated character but i think you're equally going to be able to work it out and then still churn heaps out of it so this is going to be a little bit weird a weird take on it but 
I was quietly excited to jump back on the snowflake only because it was like being familiar to it. It's nothing against the shackles, but it was kind of like, oh, they, I still have this guy. Oh, this guy is actually playing two scenarios without it. Uh, breathe a bit of life back into it, which was kind of weird. It was also a feeling of, well, I'm the level nine here. So there's a lot of relying on me to be able to to help and, and, and mitigate as much damage as I can by, you know, doing as much damage and all that kind of stuff. So I had a lot of fun jumping back onto it. We'll see how we go next week. Um, and then it's, it's bye-bye, right? It's done. So, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of sad, but at the same time, I mean, the show must go on. Well, you know what they say with great power comes great responsibility. So you got to carry the team, mate. Well, it says no birds. I didn't well, bring birds. Be, be a spider then. Uh, so I felt the same thing with not having the crab. I was like, oh, a scenario where everything's going to be really grouped in. Oh, yeah. We can play, if someone could play multiple bottom cards, they could heal the pillars right back up and uh, deal heaps of AOE damage. This sounds like a perfect scenario for my spiky friend, Sebastian. Yeah. But, it would have been, it would have been oh, good. Well. That's yeah, all right. Same. That's all right. That's that timing. It's that timing of when you meet certain scenarios at certain different groups. That's it. So, yeah, cool. That's, uh, it, that's it for me. Perfect. The last thing I was going to ask you, Gaz, how does the outpost phase work? Can you explain to me the steps? Uh, you What's go into the outpost phase. Everyone plays on their phone for <laughs> a bit. Uh, then you say, is there a section? And I look and there's usually not, but sometimes there is. Uh, then we you do some things on your phone and then there's, I'm not sure. I think it's magic comes from, there's like a dude that talks at us. Uh-huh. Uh, then, uh, then we do that. And then we do an outpost event, which I think again, someone, you draw a card from somewhere, but then again, more sound comes out and we make some decisions. Sometimes there's a riddle. Sometimes we just got to fight some dudes. Uh, and then, uh, everything else happens and then we do a scenario. No, no, no. I want step one to five. You did step one and two. What's step three? Yeah. Everything else. <laughs> no, because... Uh, I, I think step three isn't step three like uh, daytime events. So that's all the daytime events on the cards. Actually, that's something I do. It's time for daytime. So I go through and uh, make someone spend money yeah. so we can get resources. Uh, and then uh, we uh, flip some uh, gardens over and we do some other bits and pieces that I can't remember. I don't think there's much else what we do in the daytime phase. Uh, then everything else happens. Uh, so like, uh, people craft things and they purchase things and they level up and they get perks and they retire, they create new characters and then, uh, they enchant things and then we build buildings. And then I think after we build buildings or maybe in the build buildings phase is repair buildings. I think repair buildings might be after build buildings. I don't know. It was only had to do it once. So I, I don't know. <laughs> okay. No, no, that's fine. I find that even last week or the week before or whatever, you were like confused on the ordering of when things and I had to keep saying, no, 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 that's step three. No, 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 that's step four. And I was like, we are, we are nine months into this campaign and yeah, and I still not sure whether or not you know the ordering of it because you ask me all the time. So I wanted to quiz you on it and you got it right. So you do know it. Yeah. But I was still going to ask you. <laughs> I don't. Yeah. I'll make you feel important. <sighs> I like, I like lifting people up so they have a chance to shine, Daddy. That's what I do. Oh, you're such a lovely guy. No, no, no. I'm very happy. Um, I just wanted to see whether or not that was actually something you understood by now or if you just, just waited for me to yell at you to do next step, basically. <laughs> Look, I'll be honest. Now that I've just gone through it in my head and just had to recall it, um, I will probably remember everything about it now. Okay. Um, so that's probably what I needed you to do. Uh, but uh, I don't want to detract from the joke that I'm going to ask you what... I mean, that's now a meme, right? Yeah. Like, I have to ask you now because that's the joke. You have to ask me what? What's next? Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Gotcha. Now that you know that I know, it's even more important that I ask you what's happening uh, next. Speaking about a joke that we keep banging on about, um, wasn't there another moment where I think, I again, I couldn't really pay attention in this scenario what was going on over there, but you and Phil had a bit of an alteration, and I think he was saying he was going to do something, and then he said, but not this turn. It was, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was like, old school I, look, film. I heard it. it was I was old... like, Oh, throwback. <laughs> yeah. It is like, are uh, you talking about, uh, kind of putting the snowflake back on 
for another couple of scenarios and feeling like, oh, it's he, he had one of those moments as well. He's like, I'm going to go do this thing. It's like, all right, great, no worries. And then the turn happened. It's like, wait, weren't you going to do that? No, no, not now. <laughs> it's like, ah, oh, I forgot because you lured me into this false sense of security of doing everything the turn that you were going to for like true characters. Yeah. Uh, and now we've gone back to that. So, no, I think that was just a miscommunication. Okay. Um, I'll put that down to miscommunication and, uh, uh, we'll be do better next time. Yeah. Well, it hasn't happened in a long time, so it's completely fine. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, he does need to plan ahead a little bit on that character with the time tokens and the cards. So uh, it's very possible that he's explaining what he wants to do next turn. And I just was in my own world and heard that's what's going to happen great now. So, yeah. I mean, that's uh, that's it. But it was funny. Yeah. Because no, yeah. that's all I heard. <laughs> um, all right. Well, Thank you again for That's joining it. us for another episode of A Master's Screen Rolling Terribly. Um, yeah, I got nothing. I'm not going to do plugs. Uh, come join us at the Discord. Come click the link. Come say hi. We'd love to see you all there. I've been dirty. I've been joined again by Gaz. And remember, when it comes to rolling terribly, it's all in the wrist. <laughs>